All right, so you've been dabbling with the idea that you want to buy a house. Maybe you have a family member that's just been crashing at your apartment and you're just sick of them. Better yet, your significant other is sick of them. They should have been out months ago. Get or out maybe you're planning for a family and the current spot you're in just doesn't work. You're thinking of the future. Good for you. Why does that family member have to clip their toenails right in the living room and then not even bother to clean it up? Ew. Matter of fact, it's even worse. He doesn't even have any toes. There are a million different reasons that can cause you to decide that it is time to stop renting and instead purchase your own home. Wait, so then where are the toenail clippings coming from? Whatever yours may be, I just want to tell you congratulations. Owning a home can be an amazing step in everyone's journey. I am a big supporter of anyone who wants to get involved in real estate, whether it's owning a home or actively investing, or if you just want to get involved in the retail side of things. What I want to ask you is, how much do you know about this process? And are you really ready to take yourself through it? What's going on guys? My name is Mark Benneke, your Fresno area realtor, and in today's video, I'm gonna be taking you through the process of buying a house from pre-beginning to end. Now, before we get started, I'd like to ask you to perform an act of kindness for the day. It's totally free to you, and it helps out not only me, but everyone else who could find this information useful. All you gotta do is on that like button. That's it. So why do I say pre-beginning and not just beginning? Because what you're doing right now by watching this video is most likely part of the pre-beginning phase. Before you fully decide to purchase a home, you're gonna go through a stage where you're just thinking about it. You need a catalyst that's gonna push you over the edge. This could be your best friend telling you that they're purchasing a home. It could also be you watching a video that explains the entire process of purchasing a home that makes you feel so confident and comfortable with the idea of purchasing a home that you decide, you know what? I can do this. See what I did there? Huh? Or it could be your significant other telling you that they're thinking about moving out because they are done watching your family member put their no toe having ass feet Ew. all upon your furniture. The catalyst doesn't matter. What does is that you were brought to this point. The problem is that you might be lost and don't even know what the first step is. I want to make sure that you feel confident enough to move forward from here. So step one of this entire process is going to be that you feel confident enough that you're in a position to purchase a home. While I would like to be able to leave this section out and just tell you that your agent is going to be able to help you through this entire process, I don't think that I can. No. I believe in arming yourself with the knowledge necessary to at least allow you to understand the process that you're going through. You don't have to become a professional. Hell, you don't even need to be proficient. Nope. I only want you to be able to recognize what is happening and not feel lost. Uh, so in case the I? agent you hired does not hold your hand and make you feel at ease, you you're not going to be shaken up because you're prepared already. More on this later. I want you to really think about your reason to buy a house. Is it a good enough reason in your eyes and are you financially ready for this type of change? Are you mentally ready to go from a rent to an owner or maybe from an owner to an investor is this a decision that you're gonna regret a couple of years down the road if your heater breaks or maybe the roof starts leaking or maybe your tenant decides to start punching holes all over your walls and peas all over your property would you be prepared to handle it oh yeah that last part it has happened. I obviously can't answer these questions for you, and neither can anyone else. So it's crucial for you to take the time to think about all of this yourself. I can tell you that all of these problems have solutions, and they're never as bad as we think. However, if you're not ready to take them on, once you've taken the time to think it through and feel that you're ready to take them on, I recommend that you watch some videos, read some books, and maybe run it by some trusted people in your life just to get a second opinion from them. However, take people's advice lightly, especially if they've never done what you're attempting to do. It's still good to consider all sides, but just be careful who you're taking advice from, especially if it's from a real estate agent. Those guys will always tell you, I'm a big supporter of anyone who wants to get involved in real estate. <laughs> Obviously, you should be weary of anyone who's just trying to sell you on the idea of buying something just for their own gain. I personally always try to get my clients to view things from an investment perspective and long term. I am fully aware that that's not how everyone views things, and it's also not what everyone wants. But I just can't help it. I don't want what's good for me or you now. I want to make sure that it's going to be good five or ten years down the road too. And that brings us to our second point. What type of home do you want? Don't wait for your agent to start asking you a bunch of questions and then the moment you can't answer them, they just decide to show you a house, tell you that you like it, and then get you to put in an yeah. offer. You have your catalyst. You know what you need and want. So put it down on paper. Is this going to be your dream house? Will this be a stepping stone home? Is this going to be an investment property? What area do you want it to be in? Are you wanting it completely defect free? Or are you willing to put in some work and gain yourself some sweat equity? Whew. Pool? Garage size? Yard size? Do you want a fireplace? Total number of beds and baths? 
Or maybe you want an open floor plan. Does it need a second house in the back so that that toeless bastard doesn't have to be homeless, but he also doesn't have to intrude in your space? These are all the things that you need to know so that you're efficient about finding yourself a home. The more you can think about the details that you're looking for, the better that your realtor can help you. They can help you narrow down the search and save you tons of time by only showing you the houses that they know you'll like. Don't know where to start? Look at some houses online or watch some video tours. Maybe even consider going to an open house or two. Get to know the different styles that are out there. Because trust me, there's plenty of them. You know what else has plenty of different styles out there? Realtors. Number three, hire a good realtor that aligns with your values. No two people are the same. And guess what? Realtors are people too. What? I know. Shocking. He's lying. They're robots. My suggestion here is to never settle for the first one that comes along. So, the first baby. one could end up being the one you choose in the end, but I also recommend that you interview a couple more just to make sure. I'm not telling you to go overboard and hit up every single agent in your city. All I'm recommending is that you interview at least three, or at least enough until you found one that actually truly made you feel comfortable. A good realtor will ask about you, your wants, and your needs. They will get to know you and make sure that this entire experience is tailored for you. This is when that nifty little list that we made earlier with all the details of the things that we wanted really comes in handy. They'll be able to use all of the info that you gathered and help you find the exact property you're looking for. We'll also be able to give you insight on the market to help you determine what a good offer can be. Keep in mind, we don't have any control over the seller's decisions, but we can help guide you in the direction of what we feel would be a competitive offer through means other than just price. We're prepared to walk and feed your dog for an entire month. There are a couple things that I want you to keep in mind. You want someone who can provide you the expertise to help you get things done. Now this doesn't mean that they'll come at you with like big words like house or kitchen. <laughs> At least I make myself laugh. What I mean by this is someone that can put you at ease throughout the entire process because they take care of all of the falling rocks. There will be plenty, trust me. The second thing, which kind of aligns with the first, is communication. Yeah, Lack of communication so. is the number one reason that people cite for having a bad experience with a realtor. Think about that. That's pretty crazy, right? Especially considering that nearly every single one of those robots I know doesn't ever seem to shut up. And that is likely the shut problem. Up Be already. very upfront with your realtor about how you'd like for them to communicate, the times that you need them to be available, All and how day, often. This day. gives them the opportunity to be able to see if they can actually fulfill your needs. For example, if you tell me that you're gonna need me to be available at eight o'clock at night, I'm gonna tell you, I'm sorry, but I'm fast asleep by then. As much as I would love to be able to help everyone, my robot parts need lubrication, you know, and my main processor needs to be defragmented. And eight o'clock is when that takes place. The more upfront we can be with each other, the better we're gonna be able to meet each other's expectations. Now, once you find someone that you feel comfortable with, we can move on to the next step. Number four, get pre-approved. Okay, some of you might be wondering, why didn't you put this before finding a realtor? Well, cause it's my video and I'm trying to be different. Okay, not really, but like a little really. The only reason I didn't is because a good realtor can actually help you in this department. They'll be able to recommend lenders in your area that have a strong track record and can get you the best terms. What do I mean by a strong track record? A lender that'll actually follow through with the financing and not just back out last minute. Ooh, Lately, I'm out. you're gonna come across a lot of lenders that are just gonna provide you this half-assed pre-approval. They don't bother to verify any of your information and make sure that you actually make what million. you say you make. Looks they just take your word for everything and assume that you understand what you're filling out. Yeah, because we don't just scroll to the very bottom and click accept on everything, right? Looks like Apple wants our firstborn son in order to update again. Then at the last minute, when you've gotten your offer approved and you're under contract and all you have to do is secure the funding, they just pull everything yeah, out from under you. This is a <laughs> situation that happens way more than it should. A realtor that values your time as well as his own will tell you that they'll need you to get a strong pre-approval before you guys are able to start working together. It's in your best interest to make sure that you're as prepared as possible so that you can avoid as many hiccups as you can. Remember that no deal is ever problem free, but hopefully those problems won't be anything that you're responsible for. Even worse, problems that you'll have to clean up. Getting the backing of a strong lender behind you is a crucial step to make sure that you actually have the competitive advantage when you go out house shopping. Being able to tell someone that you have a fully underwritten pre-approval from a well-known and trusted lender in the area carries a whole lot more weight than just some pre-qualification from 
the place that no one's ever heard Who of before. Once you, you find the right place for you, you'll come across three of the most common loan types. If you're a veteran, a spouse of a veteran, or a reservist, you may be able to qualify for what's called a VA loan. This type of loan requires for you to have a minimum credit score of 640. A credit score is a scoring model used by lenders to determine your level of risk. It ranges from 300 to 850, and it's based on an analysis of a history of previous debt that you've taken on. There's no down payment requirements for VA loans, and also no mortgage insurance. These are pretty nifty loans for those that qualify but they do tend to be a little bit more strict. Next up is FHA. FHA has the lowest credit score required. It starts at 500 in order for you to qualify for a higher down payment, like 10 to 20%, but you can go down as low as 3.5% as long as you have a minimum credit score of 580 and also meet other requirements. FHA does require mortgage insurance, so make sure to calculate that into your monthly payments. These can be really great loans for first time buyers and those of us that may not have the greatest credit scores, but like VA loans, they can be a little bit tougher with requirements. Not quite as strict as VA, but more so than the next one up. Third is conventional. For these, you need a minimum score of 620. And if you're planning on putting anything lower than 20% down, you will be required to pay mortgage insurance. Again, don't forget to add this into your monthly payments. Down payments range from as low as 3% and up. This tends to be the strongest type of home loan that you can get because it's the least demanding on the home requirements. Some questions that I would suggest that you ask your lender, what type of home loans do they offer? What will be my interest rate and APR? Are there any special programs or discounts that I can qualify for? Push this last point a lot. Make sure that they're doing their job and pushing every single angle to give you every possible advantage you can get. What are the estimated closing costs that I can expect to pay? And what's the average processing time for your loans? Also, ask for a breakdown of how much you'll be paying over the term of the loan and maybe an estimated monthly payment that you'd be looking at. This last part, you could probably do on your own, but it doesn't hurt to see what they come up with. A few notes here. Some of you may think that some of these notes are obvious, but you'd be surprised. Lenders want to see stability. The more stable you are, the less risk they're taking. Don't change bank accounts. Don't apply for new credit or close out any accounts. Don't go out and buy a bunch of big ticket items like cars or tons of furniture or a yacht. Seriously, don't. Also, don't deposit large tons of cash into your accounts. And finally, don't co-sign for anyone. Now personally, outside of this, I don't believe in co-signing for anyone unless I'm fully prepared to actually pay for everything myself. If you do need to do any of this after you got your loan, make sure to discuss it with your lender first so they can make recommendations on how to approach it best. If you've learned anything so far, or maybe you're just enjoying my wonderful sense of humor, I ask that you help out by just clicking that like button. Shh, it's totally free. You know, I could have done this half-assed short video outlining the steps to buying a house, but personally, I don't feel like that would have been fair to anyone. I wanna make sure that you know and understand what you're gonna be going through when you're purchasing your home. So this is gonna be the cutoff point and we'll continue the next part in section two. I'm sure you probably have some questions about the first part that we've covered so far, so make sure to leave them in the comment section below. Someone else might be wondering about them too. Well, that's definitely not all I got for you, but I will see you on the next one to finish it all off. Okay, bye. Whew. I am tired today. <laughs>